In this video, we're gonna deep dive into tips and tricks featuring the tripod. And in this case, Manfrotto sent us out their brand new tripod head and brand new tripod legs. Let's get started. Film on solid ground. So as you guys can see, look down here. I am filming on wood. Every time someone walks, the tripod shakes. So you can physically see the camera shaking. I'm gonna go ahead just to show you guys like an example. Each time I walk, you're seeing that wobble. Now that's not because it's a bad tripod, it's because you're not filming on solid ground. So whenever you can, and you can't always do it, sometimes you gotta film on sand, sometimes you gotta film on gravel, but whenever you can get away with it, film on solid ground. General rule is once you understand the rules, you can start breaking them. In this case, look where I'm at. I'm breaking the rule I just told you guys as far as never film on unsturdy ground, but it's the only option I have. We're in an area that's very preserved, very well protected. So we're obeying the rules, which I have to be on this bridge. Now the problem with this is this bridge goes on and on, but anytime anyone steps on it, I feel the vibration all the way on this end so I can't get the shot I want where I want it perfectly steady. So I have to wait a while. So I've been waiting roughly 20, 30 minutes waiting for people to leave the bridge so I can get that perfect city shot. But just know sometimes you have to wait, play the waiting game. Sometimes it's a little too windy. Sometimes you got people shaking the ground. Work with what you got. Now, if you have to film on unstable grounds, one of the things I've noticed is a lot of times I'm filming by railings. Don't put your tripod next to the railing. So if I put my tripod line, for example, right here, if someone's walking by, they're already gonna potentially be shaking the ground. But if anyone grabs the rail, it's gonna also potentially shake your tripod leg. I've had it happen many times, especially if you stick it right next to a fence and you have some kid or some adult grab it and shake it just a little bit, it could potentially shake your camera and I have seen it done multiple times. So that's just a little tripod tip as well. Keep that in mind if you have to film on unsolid ground. Boom, just like that, we are on solid ground. I don't have to worry about people walking by and shaking the camera. Everything is gonna be perfectly smooth. And for the next tip, add foliage whenever it makes sense. So in this case, we're filming rocks where nothing is moving. It looks like a photograph. But if I can add something in the foreground, it's going to enhance the experience in the visuals. So in the shot, you guys can see the difference going from nothing in the foreground to something in the foreground. And now for the next big tip. Whenever you're filming static shots where you're not really following anything, you're not moving any kind of movement, is turn the image stabilizer off. So why does that even matter? Well, if I had image stabilizer turned on right now where I'm having a shot that I want to last a long time and I'm gonna be looping the shot, if I have image stabilizer on it, sometimes it can do some kind of wonky things to the actual image. If I have it turned off, as long as I have a good tripod that's not gonna be moving at all, it's gonna make it so the shot is perfectly smooth, perfectly static how I want it. I don't want any kind of slight movement based on what the camera and the lens is doing with that image stabilizer turned on. One of the biggest tips I can give you guys with filming with a tripod is when you're doing pans, left to right or right to left, don't physically move your feet like this it still looks good, but we're not okay with good. So if I was filming a full 180 or 270 degrees, I would start here. I'm standing still, but the less you can move your feet, the smoother the shot is going to be. Now let's say you wanna go even lower. Here's a little trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up a little bit put it to 50, take this off right here. I used to do this for a lot of shoots where I wanted like a super low angle. If I was filming and I want to get as close to the water as humanly possible, I would do this. I would take off the monitor, lower it to the ground as close as I could, and then I could get a shot right next to the ground. And I could still move everything as you guys are seeing right now. You see how I'm moving the camera? still getting the shot, the perfect shot. But this way I can get even lower to the ground. Now of course you could say, well, why don't you just take the camera and put it on the ground? You can do that, but you can't move it smoothly like this. Then of course you throw it in Premiere, whatever you're editing with, and then you flip the, the image and then it's perfectly level. Now the next tip I'm gonna share with you guys is how do you travel with your tripod? Well, this tip is huge because I've traveled over 40 countries doing YouTube videos with a tripod. Now my tip is just to get a good bag. I use a Manfrotto bag. Now one thing I've learned though is these tripods are really sturdy, but a lot of times when I'm traveling, I'm kind of lazy and I'll just lower this, put it in like this, 
and put it right into the bag. Now the problem with that is when you give your bag to TSA, a lot of times they'll be really rough where they're throwing it and tossing it. And I've, I've had it happen once where this part right here was busted. It was still attached, but this whole thing right here, the lever was busted back and it was really hard to get this off. So from now on, I always take this lever off, remove it when I'm traveling international or even locally, but as long as I'm on an airplane, this part is always coming off. I'm putting it in a tripod bag. A lot of times my tripod won't fit in a lot of my luggage. So that's why I have a designated bag that it goes into. And it's not like a crazy, super sturdy, super protected bag, but this definitely does the job. So there you have it, my friends. Those were our tips and tricks with using a tripod. Manfrotto tripods are the only tripods I've ever owned. So me and them have a pretty long history and I love them. I genuinely love them. They're lightweight, compact, and I'm pretty rugged with everything that we go and capture. Throwing it in the mud, throwing it in the water, just throw it in my car, traveling all around the world. And I'm still using Manfrotto tripods to this day. So I do have a long history with them. I genuinely love them, and I will continue to use them for the rest of my life. Thank you so much for watching. Over and out.